All right, this is Stefan Kinsella and Anthony Semerov will be joining me. These are some photographs of our trip to Telluride. Our first day or two before we get to, this is the hot springs, the Orvis hot springs in Ridgeway that we went to. And this is uh, me and Anthony on the lift and me and Anthony and David and Peggy, our gracious hosts. Uh, a few pictures taken on top of the mountain me and Anthony, and then this is uh, Peggy and David and Anthony, and here's me afraid to go down a, a hyper Mowgli black, which I did not go down, and here we go. This is uh, the beginning of Lift Talks with Anthony Samaroff and Stefan Gonzella. Anthony, how are you doing there? I'm doing excellent. Are you looking forward to having a good lift talk on the lift? Oh, sure. This has been like one of the best holidays ever. And we're only on the second freaking day. I know. I know, right? I know, right? Okay, we'll see you on the lift. Okay, so this is... We're about to get on the gondola. Head up. About to get on the gondola. They ask you to put this over your mouth and nose. Which is what? Retarded. Majestic, majestic as a gazelle. I know, I think we dropped the skis added to the majesty of the overall. It just showed how elegantly I can compensate for my errors in life. Ah, uh, peace and quiet. Okay, this is Tuesday. We skied yesterday. And we're on our second day, starting off late. Starting off late because someone can get out of bed. Someone's recovering from the COVID vir vaccine number two, which all my libertarian friends warned me about taking, but I just didn't listen. Yeah, you should <clears throat> injected that poison into your bloodstream. Yeah, I'm, I'm feeling the effects. So this whole trip has turned into a COVID trip because all you do is complain about COVID and get us in trouble and almost get kicked off of jet airplanes. Yeah, so I guess we should introduce you into some of the characters that we've met. <laughs> and then, do you want to sit here so that we can both be in the frame and tell the story? I'll sit by you, sweetie. Yeah, you'll get some nice views. This is such a great idea. I love this show. The Sam Roth can sell a show. So, yeah, I mean, in Houston, it was pretty good with the COVID. I mean, most places you go to shop, they ask you for a mask. I don't usually put my mask on until I'm asked. If someone asks me to put on the mask, they usually are quite polite. They say, excuse me, sir, do you have a mask? And I, or could you put a mask on? And I say, yes, I can do that for you. And I say, I could do it for them because I want them to know that I don't believe in that bullshit. And that's my little bit of civil disobedience. But I never met the, pro even though you, you're telling me that Houston's a pretty blue city, I never met the sarcastic, um, overly polite, passive aggressive, progressive slash liberal. I hate that they stole our word, but liberal asshole, smarmy. Until I went to Colorado. This is just a commercial break. You keep talking. Long-winded story. Um, let's see. What so, about the what about the people on the plane? Yeah, so you you tell that story because you oh, tell that story better than I do. Oh uh, yeah, so we were flying to Telluride from Denver on a little plane, and we were sitting together. And behind us was a couple. But well, before you go on to the couple, the air hostess announced, "Please, ladies and gentlemen, the mask must be over your mouth and nose." And she gave me a direct look because my mask was up to here. But I really want to tell these people: Do you think that I'm not wearing it over my nose just to be an obtuse asshole? Because I know I am an obtuse asshole, but that's not why I'm not wearing it over my nose. I'm not wearing it over my nose because I like to freaking breathe air, and it just doesn't. It feels really bad breathing through the mask. So anyway, the fabric. You go on. And so, and so, uh, the the people behind him, he dropped his tissue, and it was a fall. And they say, "Excuse me, sir, did you drop your tissue?" Which wasn't the real question because they they knew he dropped his tissue. They wanted to like chide him for contaminating the world with his with his uh, tissue. And then they said, "And could you please put your mask up?" Yeah. Like that was the whole. It was a ruse to. Yeah. And, and then the stewardess comes yeah. over and she's like, "Sir, I've asked you three times." 
it is a federal law, and if I have to report you to the captain, you could be banned from all future flights. Presumably on Key Lime Bumfuck Air. What a fucking... What a, and you only, you only need to fly that probably one more time in your life on Thursday when we go I'm home. such a maverick getting into trouble from the air hostess. But yeah, the funny thing is, the guy was so overly friendly and smarmy when he was like, Excuse me, sir. I think you dropped your tissue. But what? He, but like, this is a difference in culture between Americans and Europeans, because I was in the autobahn in Germany and I was playing something out of my phone, and the German lady was just like, "Excuse me, sir. Could you put headphones on?" And she just said exactly what she meant. So if it was in Europe, that guy would have been like, "Excuse me, sir. Your handkerchief is bothering us. Can you please pick us pick it off the floor?" Why do you motherfuckers have to be so passive aggressive? And it was girlfriend, it was girlfriend as well, and she didn't say please, she was just like, oh yeah, and put your mask up over your nose. Go suck a dick, lady. Anything to add? What were you talking about? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so I guess I, I agree, but I'm just compl I'm just complying. Oh, then we met this cute chick at, at the Toggery. Oh yeah, she was fine. Yeah, there was this babe I came in without my mask. She did. She was kind of like a rock chick with tattoos on her neck, and we didn't even know she had piercings on. Stefan asked her to take her mask down so we could see her face. I, I mentioned that I, I mentioned something about masks, and she more or less told us that she didn't give a fuck and she thought it was horse shit. Yeah, she, it hides people's faces so they can't see each other. Yeah, and all that she was like. What did she say? It hides people's faces so they can't see each other. And she said, hopefully, it's going to be lifted shortly. Yeah, she thinks Telluride or Colorado or something. Or, or the store owner is going to say. No and then more. Kinsella said, well, we, we can't, we've not seen your face. You should take your mask down. And she did. And she had tons of piercings. And I never even knew. Yeah. It was just as well she had her mask up. She might have scared Which means she's children. probably a Democrat, but yet she's sound on mask policy she's, anyway. She's, That's a rare company. She's, she's a, a unicorn. She's a Democrat, and yet I'd still fill her up full of babies. Right. But then we went to dinner with Lindsay, his friend Lindsay from a yoga retreat in Mexico. Yeah. As one does, and her, her boyfriend, Hernan from Venezuela. And she happens to know this chick from uh, the Toggery, and she informed Anthony that sorely. Oh, no. Sadly, she has a boyfriend. Sadly. And I said, well, it doesn't really, since she's vegan, it doesn't really count as cheap. Yeah, because you're, you're a vegetarian. You can, be vegan. vegetarian. you can be vegan. It's like her. in network, it doesn't really count. And besides, I have superior genes to, <laughs> to, her boyfriend. to her boyfriend. So he had uh, been doing him a favor by. Yeah. By, but, saving, uh, saving him the effort. Now the thing is, there's enough of a chain of connection that Lindsay could watch this and pass it on to the piercing girl, but I don't really care. Anyway, it's really interesting, I should tell you this. I think the only person I met in Colorado on my travels was this girl, Lindsay, right? And I invited her to the Libertarian meetup I had in Denver, thinking, well, she lives in Colorado, maybe she's a stone's throw distance. And she's like, ah, it's pretty far from where I live. I don't think I'll make it. And then I went on her Facebook profile and I saw that she lived in Telluride. And I sent her a WhatsApp like, GTFO, mate. Do you seriously live in Telluride? That's where we're going skiing. She's like, no, wait, what are the chances oh, of that? Okay, we're, hit, we're, we're coming up to Sophia Station. We need to get off here. What Let's get ready. What does Sophia mean in I don't Greek? know. Uh, it means uh, a bad actress in it. Means Godfather 3. Right. We're off the lift. We're about to ski for the day. Hello. Let's see, keyboard start. What did you say about your skiing? I'm impressed at how much better I am today than yesterday. Yeah, me too. Okay, we're on the first official lift of our Lift Talk adventure, Lift 10. Lift 10. And, uh,. I think we should call this like libertarians on the lift. Libertarians on the left. Not, and not on the left. Get it? Yeah. The new, the, the, the new, the new leftist libertarians. <laughs> new leftist. Leftist. What does take a left mean? Is that like getting high, like smoking? No, it means turn left, left on the road. No, take a left. L I F T. Take a left? Yeah. I, I've never heard that expression. It's in a Bob Marley song. I let my mind take a left. Maybe he means take. Oh, maybe his mind went up because he got high. Yeah. What about your left for the day? We can call this show your take left talks. Your left for the day, as in it puts you like your left out the co lift lift out in the cold. Left out in the cold. That is true. <laughs> <laughs> it is the left out in the cold.
I've been surprised little T-boy here could ski so well for a Scotsman. Well, for a middle class I, Scotsman. I ski more than you. I know, you're better than well. You, who's better do you think? I don't know because it's hard to tell. Your technique might be better because you've got more lessons. Yeah. I'd need an independent judiciary. Who's pri whose privilege is better? I think your privilege is better. Yeah. Yeah, I kind of think I have about 2.7% too much you privilege. Got, I want to trim a little bit off. I need to go on a, a privileged diet. You definitely need to trim a little bit off. I'm working know. on the belly. The oh, big belly. Off your speaking of, speaking of bellies. I met, I met Stefan's very lovely, very beautiful wife. Do you know that? A lot of people have never met her Jesus. before. Jesus. Cindy exists. She keeps a low profile. Hey, but speaking of belly, we could do... a social justice warrior child. Oh, he's just he's just a little woke in a, in a, a pleasant way. Woke, but Better than being an alt-right asshole. It is. I would say on the scheme of things it is, but you still let the team down. Okay, but I'm going to give you a Scottish accent. You tell me who it is. Get in my belly! Get in my belly! Yeah, you do a good Meg Myers impression. I do a good impression of someone doing an impression. Of a, a, sc a, sc a Scotsman? Get in my belly! Look, this is proof that the Irish and the Scots can get along after all. But you're not really Irish, it's like... Fuck off! <laughs> you bastards, you get to have a fucking heritage. We can't have one? No. What do you want me to trace my heritage See, back in, to Abraham in, Lincoln? In, in Europe, no one ever says they're. See, he's moving the camera away from me. Well, they still hear your voice they they like Hey, there's, where's, we, we need to show you Oprah's bridge. She she, oh, yeah, that's she bought a house and she built a freaking bridge. bridge. No, that's not Oprah's bridge, but it's like that. It's true. There she had to build a multi-million dollar bridge to get to her house for the whole community's benefit. She said, okay. Yeah, I mean, just imagine how many starving children in Africa. I wonder if Oprah's, ever, do you think Oprah skis? Or she just like has a house in the mountains? Like, I'm sure she, she invites her skiing ski. buddies she over. He doesn't look like a skier though, you gotta oh, admit. Yeah, she's a little bit heavy around the belly area, but you're one to talk. So Hey, I started when I was skinny. You were skinny? Yeah, I was skinny. Skinny as shit. Let's see. Under So I was about thirty seven. In, in, in insert photographic evidence to video. Alright. I thought you were just big boned. I didn't think you were actually a fat big bones. Now that you've told me that you put on the weight I know. I'm a little fella like you. It's Due to your weak character. <laughs> I know. Due to brainwashing from the state, which I've succumbed to. I actually put on 11 pounds since coming to Houston, Texas, but I was a little bit under. Crikey, that's almost half a stone. I know, but I don't want to take all of it off. I only want to take six pounds off. Just grow your love muscle. I got a little bit of a belly. Actually, you can yeah, see. Yeah, you my look. Face you look like a little Buddha there. symbol or something. A little bit. But it's not tons. But I still want to take six pounds off. Okay, lift talk segment three or whatever, signing off. All right, lift, uh, lift 10 the second time. We're, uh, that was pretty good. What did you think about that run? I really enjoyed it. Nice and flat, fast, slightly icy, but not too bad, right? Yeah, I'm eating a granola bar. Why don't you take, take it away until I Because I had two muffins already. That's enough of my big muffin no, on I my mean, belly. Why don't, you, why don't you chat to the audience while I eat? Oh, they might like to see you eat. Alright. Anyway, like to see me eat pussy! <laughs> Which you can find on. Is this gonna be on your on your podcast? Yeah. <laughs> what is this Scottish. Is, it was Scottish Liberty. It was a Scottish puberty. I've got a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a lot of different professions. You can find me at www.beak.com. Uh, well, unfortunately, I've seen you naked twice already. Freaking hot springs. Someone forgot his bathing suit. Doesn't wear a mask anywhere. I'll put it that way. Well, <laughs> here's the thing. What's the thing? You didn't need Speaking to of things. <laughs> you didn't need to see my junk if you weren't looking at my junk. You mean it's, you mean it's easy to miss? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but not in a gay way. <laughs> my butt cheek. Sorry, let me get this <laughs> <laughs> my butt cheek touched his knee in the jacuzzi, but not in a gay way. It was just his friends. He was getting in, and I said, "Dude, boundaries." <laughs> I told him I thought it was a I thought it was a hairy porpoise swimming by. I'm like, it can't be, it can't be in a hot tub. No, 
it's gotta be something else. Those aren't pillows. All right, so anyway, we're gonna, we haven't wrecked one time. Hmm? We haven't wrecked at all. I've not fallen over even once. I've almost wrecked, but anyway. What about lift thoughts? How are we gonna enlift in people on this talk? And left in their lives. Well, I just wanted to talk about the fact that when you get near the left, they sometimes ask you to pull this up over your nose. See, it's always and about fucking COVID. Guy, I'll look like, are you retarded or something? Like, I actually looked at him like that. Right. I think he knew. But the thing is, you're nowhere near anyone. And the thing is, everyone knows it's bullshit. They just do it because their boss said. And their bosses just do it because their boss said. And it won't. Where's people's line? Do people actually have a line anymore where they say I won't no, take No, they're this total status anymore? sheeple. So tell them about our adventure on Sunday. So we flew in Sunday from Denver. No, yeah, after spending mm -hmm. Saturday night there and seeing some old buddies. I saw Karen and Harlos and my old buddy Chris Simino. And he saw some other people. I saw different buddies. We, they were really cool we, as well. We couldn't reconnoiter because the, the, the grouping was not appropriate for logistical reasons. But anyway... So we flew in and he, he happened to know this girl from a from a Mexican yoga retreat. No, I'm not making this up. And she lives in Telluride. So her and her boyfriend met us and they took us to these hot springs. Mm. And, and uh, well, they took us to Ure first, which is where Gulf's Gulch is. That was cool. Yeah, and we had some really unhealthy Mexican food. It was great. And then we went to uh, Ridgeway, went to the Orvis Hot Springs, which is clothing optional, which you took advantage of too. It was very optional for me. Oh, tell them about the, 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 the... It was optional in the sense that it's an option that I didn't take. The steam, uh, tell them about the steam room yeah, with the rocks and the, the water. Sauna. The sauna. And there was this uh, Native American guy that was like, We used to pray. We used to give thanks to rock and water. Then the white man came and he made us give thanks to God. But we used to give thanks to rock and water. Because we're made of rock and water. Yeah, he started listing off the elements of rock. And he, stone is made of potassium and blah, 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 blah. That's what our rock bodies are made of. So we give thanks to stone and water. And he wanted to educate us on the ways of the ancients. And it was just a bunch of my superstitious religious bullshit is better than your superstitious bullshit. I like that skinny topless chick sitting down beneath us who was going like, I wonder if it's better to pay someone to find your energy or to find your energy oh, yeah, yourself. I mean, I was in a hut of, of freaking Democrats, let's face it. It was worse than that. These were like, uh, these were like the cast of a show that is set, yeah, it's, it's, set in a new age retreat or something they should make that show. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit racist but uh, fuck it. so the thing is you can say a lot oh this is a long lift <laughs> since we've touched upon religious issues definitely we need to bank for a topic our discussion on a subject how certain can you be that objective reality is objective reality. As certain as one can be. You can have that. As certain as possible. You can have that whole conversation. It goes to 11, put it that way. It goes to 11. I'm not even going to have to say that. We're going to have to have a, a lengthy discussion. A proper lengthy discussion. These are not things, matters that can be solved in weird sound bites. Okay, here, here's what's funny. When I pass someone on the lift like this, like imagine that's a person, right when they get here, you say, what state are you from? <laughs> and they feel compelled to answer. They'll go, ah, Alabama. And then they're like, wait, were we having that conversation? And... That granola bar was really freaking good. I wish I had another I thought you were against grains. I'm not a fan of grains, but I'm hungry and we're on the left. You're just walking fucking contradiction, aren't you? Well, it would be better if I packed some bananas. I agree, but... I thought you were packing a banana. <laughs> Well, you're, you're the one who had a good look at it. I did not have reason. a good look at it. Yeah, I had a bad look at it. Why'd you keep on going on and on about my junk? Are you a little bit, are you a little bit, I was are you a little bit Jeffrey Tucker? Is that what it is? <laughs> no, no comment. <laughs> Leave poor Jeff I really, alone. I really hope that he doesn't watch this show. I'm a fan of Jeffrey Tucker. My and too. also Mark Thornton. And also David Gordon. <laughs> Sorry, what were we saying? Uh, uh, oh, can you harmonize? Try to uh, harmonize with me. And also Ralph Rakel. Try to harmonize with me. 
I'll try a different pitch. Uh, oh. My brother and I could do that. Ba 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 I'm thinking of a good vibration, sunset, lemonu, a good side. Alright, I know this one. Good vibrations. Alright, until the next lift. Lift, stay lifted. Like his shoes. Alright, we're halfway down from lift 10, Sunshine Express. And why don't you tell us what this is? This is Oprah's Bridge, which she had commissioned and built. You'd think that she had better things to spend her fortunes on than a bridge, but seemingly not. Thank you, Oprah, for this bridge of peace. Okay, we were talking about the, like, Hop's idea that the right is realistic about recognizing hierarchies and differences and authority figures naturally, and the left is egalitarian, and you think it's horse shit. Well, I mean, I don't think they're the right as a realist or anything like that. They're just, they're mostly defined by what they don't like. Correct. So throughout history, they just change their position. And that's not a way to be in the world. Right. And that's not a way to, and that's why they lose. Because look. They're not coherent. They're not a coherent Yeah, doctor. throughout history, who has actually written the political philosophy for life? There's maybe about a dozen good, uh, hardcore, right-wing intellectuals most of the basis for their philosophy has been written by libertarians who they steal ideas from and then shit all over how did they treat ayn rand they shat and pissed all over her after stealing her they ideas. did shat on her and how did they treat murray rothbard they shat and pissed all over him after stealing his ideas they show no gratitude whatsoever to libertarians for actually doing their thinking for them. The left are right when they say, okay, well, if Hop is right when he says that the right are realists, then the left are right when they say that the right are anti-intellectual. They are anti-intellectual. They've always been anti-intellectual. And- I agree. And so, okay. Basically what I was saying is people like Hop have a soft spot for the right and they create all sorts of... There is a reason that they're... They that, that libertarians have more in common with the conservatives. Today, today, but not under Bush. Okay, anyway, we gotta get we off. They have all these wacky theories for why the right is better than the left, but they hate you. They think that you're their you're, they're retarded little cousin, like Rudrick from the film Dirty Rock Scoundrels, featuring Steve Martin. If you've not seen it, watch it. Bye. Film this milk. Here we go. Go to the right. Whoa. Whoa. Okay, we made it. Bye for now. Oh, that was a good run. That was a good run. Nice and icy. Okay. Like I like my woman. You like your woman? <coughs> I see. I always say, a girl who can't back chat ain't all that. <laughs> I made that up myself. What's well. back chat? It means like sassy a little bit. Uh, back talk. She, she needs to be clever. Yeah. If a girl isn't clever, she's just, um, how do I say this politically correctly? Let's say her functions are limited. <laughs> <laughs> I, I object to that on behalf of all women Why? of whatever gender. Uh, are you saying that? <laughs> I mean, there's no way, even if you don't take, if, if you take what I say at face value, I don't put really any deeper meaning into it, it's true. At least you have one function. Yeah, it's obvious that some people have to do more and more certain functions. Oh. Alright, what were we going to talk about? Tom Woodshow or something?
Well, I was watching Tom Woods play a game of chess with... Yeah. Speak up. I was watching Tom Woods play a game of chess with David... Damn, what's that guy's name? Steele, Ramsey Steele. Great guy, David Ramsey Steele. Uh, I was sitting... Uh, the, uh, you're not a fan? Oh. I was sitting on the couch, Auburn, Alabama, at the Mises Institute, and I overheard this voice, and I was like, you are a dead ringer for someone. I can't think who. Where, where are you from? It's like, well, Birmingham. That's a long story short. Oh, uh, Broomy. Don't they say a Broomy over there? Yeah, they do, actually. And I was like, uh, eventually I was like, there's this guy, someone, I, I, I said another name, Ramsey Steele. And he's like, oh, that's funny, because I'm David Ramsey Steele. I was like, you. I've read some of your book from Mark Stimesis. So we got in a chat. Anyway, him and Tom Woods were playing chess. And Tom Woods is a brilliant to play chess. He almost beat... He... he all, um, Walter Block was in inches of losing to Tom Woods in a game of chess and, Tom, and, and Walter Williams clawed it back at the last moment. But that's to be expected because it was just Walter defending the undefendable. <laughs> <laughs> exactly what I was thinking. Anyway, I was just remarking to Stefan, it's funny how the horse is the, the knight and chess because I always thought that it was the person riding the horse that was the knight. <laughs> this sounds like a David Gordon joke for some reason. But, but no. I, I always thought it was the the person riding the, the horse, horse that was the knight. But, but no. I didn't know this was the Roman Emperor which had a horse for a senator. <laughs> but apparently no. A horse is a high ranking member of the feudal system. So you learn something every day. Well, we know that some of their cousins are asses, so, you know, that would make sense. Mm. I just sat on the couch and had a chat to Jenna. Well, it's well the mountain's have, empty today, right? I think that's why they... We have it to ourselves. We're like kings. Yeah. We're taking our privilege. King Canute. Did he ever get this tide to go back? Now the question is, can we ever get the tide of statism to go back? Or is that just like being King Canute? Oh, I'll tell you something interesting though. So tonight we're having... Oh, what I said wasn't interesting, fuck you. No, but, uh, my head's on this topic. So tonight we're having this catered dinner and the chef asked me, uh, when we come over to cook, would you, pref would you prefer us to wear a mask or not? Like he wanted us to give him the lead, and we said, we don't give a damn. Anyway, so I'm going to ask him tonight, what percentage, uh, what's the, what answer is he getting? Like, what percentage of people say they don't care? Which Because that'll be a good man on the, man well, on the street gonna test. To, you're going to have to tune into the next edition of Lift yeah. Talks to find out what he said. Yeah, because That's we're approaching a hill, which might be the terminal station, but it's not. So I'm going to tell you, well... Yeah, so Stefan, being the baller that he is, just arranged to have a chef come over and cook for us. Yeah. Well, I'm paying back my host for keeping us for free. That's, that's the idea. That's my that's my way of paying well, them how, back. How am I paying them back? I'm not doing jack shit. You gave them a book. That's true. We brought them some chocolate. I did. No, you brought them chocolate. Well, you're, 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 you're giving them free medical advice. I'm going to send them a thank you card. Free diet advice. <laughs> thank you card. Yeah. My, my friends are nice, nice, normal Republicans. That's what you want. They, That's who you want to go on vacation with, nice, normal Republicans. They're good. You just... I don't know why you've got such a boner for Republicans. <laughs> <laughs> Not compared to Lee. <laughs> oh, yeah, Lee. Your friend, Lee. Lee Glody. Right? No, but you just don't just have a boner for Republicans. He for really Trump. He really wanted Trump's hard dick. <laughs> All right, I gotta pause. My hand's getting too cold. We'll pick this up right, next. Here we lift. go. We're on lift one, the little chandala lift. Yeah, uh, sorry for speaking so fast at the end of the last one. Yeah, sorry. I'm not really good at fitting ideas into short spaces. I always think that in order to give a full picture of an idea, you really need to. Take I know, like that lady identity. She's like, okay, can you explain Bitcoin to me in two minutes? I said probably not. <laughs> I mean, judging by your apparent technical abilities and my ability to summarize all this stuff.
you're not really putting things in lead person's terms is not really your strong point. well i i didn't think they'd have the cost time the time attention span to listen long enough for me to slowly explain it so i was you know, compressing but anyway my mouth is so you cold use words like um, i think stick merging <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to remember what I used today that was called. Oh, what? Oh, no, no, no. It was asymptote. And you also asymptotic. I said it approaches the line asymptotically, and they're like, what's that? I said, you know, math. They're like, I never heard that. I'm like, that's yeah. the opposite of exponential. That's what I told them. Well, I don't think that helped. <laughs> I, I finally explained that. What, what other words do you use that are big? Uh, praxeology. Just keep on listening. Man. But I tried to explain it. Uh, I, my my mouth is so frozen, clot. Um. Uh, with the words uh, heterogeneous. Mm -hmm. Um. Um. Uh, Elemosinary. I like to use that one to confuse oh, people. Yeah, I oh, I like this. Yeah, L E E with a little accent mark. M O S Y N A R Y. That's in case you want to look it up in the dictionary and find out what it means. <laughs> it means charitable. How many big words do you actually know? Have you ever counted? No, probably more than average, but um, I like to say I something the like... A, the average person is a fucking idiot, so you could basically describe most of those. I like to use words the opposite way, say something like, uh, like, like I just swam in the pool. Oh, that swim was so innervating. Innervating. Innervating means to sap you of strength. <laughs> No one even but knows. it sounds like you're energized. Yeah, no one even knows. They that. don't know the words, so yeah. they're like, "Yeah, I feel innervated too." I'm like, "You're late, do you?" <laughs> I tricked you. I tricked you into misusing a word wrongly. I'll, I'll, I'll like, I'll hold up on a can of gasoline and say, "Is this flammable or inflammable?" Welcome to my Bergschrund. Welcome to my world. We're gonna go up Lefo now. We can go to Garano Ranch, whatever, and have a hot chocolate if you want that wouldn't be too bad because it's kind of cold dude don't wuss out on me tomorrow will be a little warmer anyway i don't uh, it's desolate here it's just so, dead no wonder they're closing it early they put all these freaking uh gondola carriages around the fireplace in the center of mountain village so people can socially distance and sit by the fire in their little cabins i kind of just want to infect everyone with the virus just to spite the people who are destroying my life because of it Fuck it. Give it to everyone. Right. Let God sort them out. I thought libertarians were not misanthropes. Well, so a lot of libertarians are misanthropes. Tam, my usual co-host, is a self-confessed misanthrope. I'm going to defend Tam. He was a good host. All right, I'm going to stop. Say goodbye. My mouth's freezing over. All right, lift four. So we were talking yesterday, like, what's the difference between political philosophy, political theory, legal theory stuff libertarians do so I think it's an intersection of some of those right because it's all like to say intersection it's such a trick right that's a woke word they say intersectionality yeah I know hold on I'm gonna glove up heard. so you said you had some thoughts on that well you asked what what, who do you think my work fits in? Yeah. In Stephen Kinsella's work. Yeah. And what did I say? I thought you were a legal theorist. You think it's political theory, too. Yeah, I thought it's political theory. Yeah, because you're talking about what the law... Ought to be. Ought to be. So you which, need to know some law. Which is why it's political theory rather than legal theory. Because legal yeah. theory would be something like... Legal theory is well, more, yeah, law, yeah, more law, 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 law in. What law, law is, is, not what it should be. Law, but legal theory... And that's sometimes called jurisprudence, too. Or, or even, what the rather than what the law is, what the structure of the law is. Correct. As it stands. Correct. Legal theory. See, some people say, I'm good at, me at these things pedantic things like making distinctions between lots of different things that's maybe why some people like to read my stuff because i'm really fucking pedantic and i split hairs um so that's a good question for me if i do say so myself i know what i'm bad at i don't think i'm a very original thinker i think that i'm pretty good at presenting other people's ideas i don't think that 
It's better to be right than original, right? Yeah, it's better to do something well. No, this Hayek. It's better to do something well than be to do something original. I think occasionally I come up with new arguments, but it's not my strong point. This, this is what I, where we're gonna go after Garado Ranch. Go hang out in the sun. What do you think? That sounds great. See, but you know, you wouldn't call libertarianism a political theory. It's a political philosophy. philosophy. So it is itself a political philosophy. But I think a political philosophy is more like. Yes, yeah, it's, it's a certain view about the way politics should be structured, which is a right. view about law. Political theory is, sorry, you're saying political philosophy. Political philosophy is a field of study, I would say. It studies, it's, it studies political systems, so yeah. it's not really... Political, it, so it studies idea, we're different basically, strands We're arguing of normatively, so we're arguing normatively about what the law should be. I just don't know if when there's a... When you're arguing, nor, okay, when you're arguing, so you're saying, so, sorry. I interrupted. What's your question? No, what, what's the right word for it? Really? When you're arguing normatively for what the political system should be... And what the law should be, yeah. You're doing political philosophy. Political philosophy, huh. When you're arguing what the law should be, you're maybe doing political philosophy as well. But you could say... More legal moral philosophy. You could invent a term for it, like just by shoving things together, like legal moral philosophy. No, no, but legal moral philosophy would be a study of different views on what the law should be. So I talk about like I, like I say, I do, I, I do libertarian theory. I see. So that's the best. I think that's the best description. You're theorizing what the libertarian position. But what would the what would the what would the what would the correlative thing be for a, for a socialist or for a or for an uh, environmentalist or for or for a conservative? Well, would they I mean, be doing conservative legal theory or well, conservative think, theory? Uh, well, I mean, it depends what because they right. What was Marx doing? A mixture of a bunch of stuff. Yeah. Political philosophy, sociology, economics. Not very good economics, but he's still doing economics. He still basically understood a lot of Ricardo and Smith, and he could say exactly what he disagreed with when it came to Ricardo and Smith. What I find always interesting crazy. is uh, how the word economics used to be called political economy, I right? I know, but it also had a slightly different scope. Do you think political economy sort of encompassed political philosophy and political and, and Poli economic sort of? No, no, political economy was saying how a state should run the economy, whereas economics oh. has far greater bounds. Than oh, it's that. a study of economic phenomena. Uh -huh. Yeah, okay. and, indeed. So political economy it was more limited in scope. Well, then maybe what we're doing is libertarianism is political economy because we're saying what no, how the state should run the economy. Because economy, political economy is not normative. Oh. So as soon as you bring in the normative it's element, okay. you're bringing in philosophy. All right, we got to cut this That's short. That's a great conversation, by the way. Good topic. Thank you. Thank you, Internet. Tom Tomboy Tavern. How does that feel? Just your neck cap going under that? All right, that was a nice little break. Where are you? F Hi, it was a nice, it was a nice too long break. If you stop for too long, you don't want to get back up again. Yeah, I guess I have it backwards this time. So anyway, Sela likes to stare off wistfully into the distance and zone out. Yeah, it's one of his habits. My wife says, "Why you don't don't do Jesse?" Because we used to have a, a female friend named Jesse who would do that stare. And she didn't want you to do her because she was afraid that Jesse might be better in bed. Well, I actually dated Jesse because she was my all, all the more reason for she your wife's like, my, my wife's good say, friend and roommate. Don't and so. do Jesse. <laughs> Did you do Jesse? I dated Jesse. That's all I'll say. A gentleman never talks. Well, I must not be a gentleman because I love talking about sex. <laughs> okay. What about the, uh, the 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 Uber driver in Auburn, the the black chick who oh, picked us up? Cool. Yeah, we had. Uh, do you want to tell the story? No, you can. We had a uh, black taxi driver pick us up. Pick up. 
She was getting into Thomas Sowell and Walter Williams, she said. She freaked out about Trump when Trump got elected. So she did her research on YouTube and the more she found out, the more she realized she was more sympathetic to free market ideas. And uh, ah, she gave me her email address. I sent her a link to a book I liked. And then I asked her, did she thank me? And I said, is there anything you want me to watch? She didn't reply. So I guess that's the end of that. But she had, she had this kind of complicated name like Antonita or something like that, yeah, right? Yeah, she had a similar name to me. Anyway, that's where we're gonna hit today. At the end, we're gonna go do some sunbathing. What do you think about that? Does it look like heaven? I like working. I don't like sunbathing. We're gonna sunbathe today, and you're gonna like it, whether you like it or not. <laughs> I like it whether I like it. <laughs> All right, we're gonna go meet beat Miss Peggy in a second and ski with our buddies. But anyway, it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Check. Why do they always play Africa by Toto when Hold the Line is clearly a superior song? Yeah, I don't think they can answer you because this is a one-way conversation. All right, later, later. That is what she said last night. All right, so we're on the left and you're whining that you're cold. It's a little bit cold today. Yeah, it's colder. It's about 12 degrees colder than yesterday. But tomorrow will be warm again, so that'll be just perfecto, huh? Yeah, I'll probably get sunburned and then I'll have something else to whine about. We're going to go meet Miss Peggy, who's a normie. Miss Peggy. She's Peggy. lovely. Miss Peggy. Peggy Sue. Anyway, uh, what have you, we're going to do a hot tub adventures segment in our in our... Yeah. In our lift you up segment. You can get a little bit of uh, insight into the world of all our libertarian celebrities. <laughs> oh, I should, should I film some of the dinner party tonight? Sure. That might be inappropriate. These people might not want to be associated with libertarians. They might, want it. they might want to talk about, they might want to talk like conservatives about how it's poor people's fault that they're poor. And <laughs> David this problem. morning, David yeah. said, they, they work harder than other people and that's why they're rich. What did you say? <laughs> uh, David said, I've never met an anarchist before. I said, well, you've met three now because I brought Juan Carpio here and, and, and Anthony, we're all three anarcho capitals. We're growing. We're a growing threat, man. Mm -hmm. Better watch out. Yeah, stop sucking the deck of the state. Oh, what's that feminist t-shirt you said you liked? Oh, yeah. I want to get one that says she wants the D. Destruction of patriarchy. <laughs> I would wear that ironically. <laughs> she wants the D. Destruction of patriarchy. That's funny. If someone wants, if, if someone wants to get a nice version of that T-shirt made for me, I'll gladly accept the gift. I want to go down there. That's what I want to do today. I want to go chillax on the snow. What you want to do? You want to do that? We could do it for a while. Right. Okay, now here's a brief clip from the Uber driver conversation in Auburn uh, at the Mises event a few weeks ago that we just mentioned in the previous Lyft talk clip. I'm going to go back to the 50s. Yeah, yeah, go back to the 50s, baby. We were thriving. So was, was it a slave mm -hmm. mentality then? No. You exactly. Guys, you guys are like, <laughs> not from me, Antonita. Uh, yeah, I, think, I haven't fully turned Republican yet, but I'm on the verge. Well, we're libertarians, we're actually. Libertarian. So oh, we're like Republican okay. square. But, but, but what you yeah. said was very eloquent. Yeah. yeah, but I definitely am... Um, 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 Breaking away from the Democratic Party. Good. Because you, you know at the end of the day, they're not serving you. Right. right. They're not. Thank you they're so not much. Thanks. Okay. And now back to our regularly scheduled lift talk where we join Miss Peggy, our neighbor and friend and host, gracious host and lovely lady. What's even the point in that? Hey, so uh, this is lift talk part X with special guest Peggy. Hello. I can take my little mask off. You're going to be on, on the YouTube. Oh, I am? Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, nice. What do you think about this libertarian stuff we keep yammering on about? I think you guys are a little bit crazy, but generally I agree with it. Good crazy or bad crazy? What kind? Good, good crazy, crazy or bad Probably crazy? Probably good crazy, but I'm, I can't get there on all of it. You okay. Know? Well, there's hope left, my child. I'm already there, babe. There's no way back for me. I know. I've been ANCAP since I was two months old. You've been what? NCAP, anarcho capitalist. 
again. Anarcho capitalist. Anarcho. See, this is what we it have. It means anarchist libertarian. Middle of the road, right wing conservatives. They don't just don't understand our lexicon. Yeah, but yeah. Peggy. I mean, generally speaking, I like the less government idea. Good, good woman. You're. Yeah. You're headed the thing to is, we like a lot less, like a lot, le like very less, like um, like none. That sounds well, good. I don't know. They're kind of crazy people out there. Uh, well, yeah, I do, know. What do you do, do about a police force? Well, what what we do about crazy? I know it's private. What do you do with crazy people in the absence of government? Well, I've got an idea. Well, you don't put them in charge of a freaking government. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good start. What do you do? Because it's not going to be great. What not do you be do great. with like sociopathic people who only care about themselves? Well, one thing you do is you don't put them in charge of the military. <laughs> that, that might be a start. What do you do with abusive people who like to beat people up? Well, one thing is you don't, <laughs> don't give them guns and send them into them the cops. military. Yeah. And make them cops. Yeah. So I'll take my chances with the free market. Thank you very much. With the free market or with a free market? The... There's the, only one? It doesn't really matter. I don't know, just like being pedantic. So you'll have to send Peggy emails explaining to her what we're going to do about a police force. Not that the police force does a good job of preventing crime or even solving crime. In fact, sometimes when you get your car stolen and it's got a microchip in it that allows them to locate your car using a satellite, the police still tell you they're not going to locate the car and uh, apprehend the assailant. So one thing I would say is you fire the police if they don't actually do a good job and you hire someone else to do their job for the. If they do a good job, you fire them? If they don't do a ju good if job, you can fire them. Oh, that would be nice. Yeah. With the police union. There yeah. would be no police unions, I take it. Well, I mean, and teachers unions. Well, the thing is, the teachers have a monopoly service under the current system, so the union means in a free market, there'd be a bunch of different poli uh, people providing education. The union wouldn't be, and it's the same for the police. Like, they could have a union, but they'd just be one of several options that people had. So if they got too big to the group. They'd be easier to get rid of or replace with someone better. Yeah, I think so too. I'm doing all the heavy lifting in these uh, lift talks. I'm <laughs> lifting the camera. My arm's getting tired. Isn't your hand getting cold? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, today's cold. My lips are cold. My fingers are cold. My heart is cold and shriveled. Your heart is cold. Well, they had a, they had this case. This is just one case where there was some women living together and someone broke into their home and they went up into the attic and they called the police and the police came and drove outside their house and stopped and then went away and after a while they went downstairs to see if anything had happened and the three of them basically got raped by the people that broke into their house and the police didn't do their job i think they called them a couple times they said they'd send someone right out again and then they took the police to court for not doing their job and the judge ruled that the police have no obligation to protect anyone from criminals and so the cops got off. Of course you don't have an obligation. Even though the women got raped. So what I'm saying is, without government you wouldn't have ridiculous cases like that because they work for you. The government don't think they work for you. They think you work for them. So. Hey Peggy, where'd you get that lanyard for your phone? It's online. Amazon. Did it buy? Was it just for your phone or just for a large size phone? I don't know. I'd be scared to it, put mine in a lanyard. Because I think that'd be great for me skiing. Oh, I love it. I'm scared it. in case I ski too fast and it comes off the lanyard. Why would it come off? I don't know. It's the kind of stupid shit that happens to me. I'm great at losing things. Yeah. Talking about my decorators. Over and out. Over and out. Over and out. Anthony King. And this is a picture of Anthony Samarov skiing. I'm recording this on iMovie. And this is a very short video of Anthony skiing with me filming on my iPhone.
We are at the end of a, a nice day skiing, our second day, and uh, don't look too close. Yeah, don't let me hold this here. Okay. <laughs> there, I'll hold this here. <laughs> Just because the junk is at the trunk. This might look weird, but <laughs> was, that, was that inappropriate? <laughs> That's okay. I, I tucked it under in a mangina anyway. <laughs> I got a mangina. <laughs> so. I'm not even drunk, I've just had one of these. This is what I'm always like. Yeah, I have one of these, which is not drunky. You have to appreciate Kinsella, because you might remember the first time he came on the Scottish Liberty podcast, he was wasted. Yeah, but not next time. I like to take, I like to, I like to take credit for the fact that Kinsella's quit booze. I like to think that it's because he came on our show and humiliated himself. That he decided, do you know what? Drinking's no longer for me. Now, if I would have remembered it, it would have helped. Can I take uh, credit for all of your achievements from Sh now on? Sure. In fact, can I post data? See that book, Intellectual Property, Against Intellectual Property. If it wasn't for me, Kinsella never would have written that book. Damn, you've got time time traveling skills. I know. What age was I when? When did that book come out? Two thousand one. 2001 when I was the prime age of 15 yeah. didn't, I didn't even know that I was going to grow up to be your friend I, thought never, I didn't even know you exist never mind didn't know I was going to be your friend it's crazy crazy how life works I, when you came on our podcast I didn't know you were going to be my friend I just thought it was a podcast thing Well, I guess when you travel around the world, that's what you get. Two low lives live in the high life. Yeah. Prairie, Prairieville moved up to tell you right. Can I tell you something? Yeah, you guys at home. They used to call America the land of opportunity, and that is true. Because since I've come here, I've had tons of opportunities. Went to the Conference of Mises Institute, made friends with this dude. I'm publishing a book on cellular health. Uh, what else happened? Uh, I had a great uh, experience in Florida. What's more, uh, I got a phone call from, I got a message on Facebook from a publisher asking to publish my next book. Um, well, we went to Auburn too. Yeah, I went to Auburn. I uh, spoke to Michael Heiss uh, about getting on the bill. How did he say his name is pronounced? Let's tell him. Heiss, you. actually. He said his name. It's not Heiss. Heiss. Okay, it's Heiss, everyone. <laughs> Michael Heiss. Michael Heiss is official. Maybe we'll have him on the show one day. Maybe you could be co host, Stefan. Okay. Is there anyone you want to interview? Because maybe you can be the guest co host of the podcast and interview someone. Hmm. I have to think about it. That's not how I roll usually. It looks like I'm going to be on the bill at the Nevada Libertarian Party State Convention. Oh, here's a tip. Stop here's a tip for you. you. A tip for you when you go to Nevada. Most outsiders try to make it fancy, and they call it and they say Nevada. No, but it's really Nevada. That's what, how I pronounce that. I know you did it right. But the interesting thing is, um, yeah. Maybe I should just see if I can get on all of them. I'm such an attention whore. Um, I've got a speaking opportunity in Seattle. None of this shit happened when I was in Scotland. What the fuck have I been doing for the last five, six, seven years since I've been a public intellectual? Being depressed. Yeah, partly. So, uh, but I think That's we should... That's just because I hadn't met you yet, but now that I met you mm -hmm. and I'm no longer depressed, yeah. my life is complete. This every, every, Everyone away. thinks I'm an asshole. I know, that's because... Your online persona is a little bit more sharp than you are in real life. <laughs> I love the fact that because I'm in the pool, it makes it look like the bottom half of my body is like... <laughs> yeah. Look, 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 it makes it look tiny. It's an illusion. It's like I'm a little Buddha it's like It's like optical shrinkage. So I think what we should do is end our, end our lift notes today. Is, and maybe we do another is, tomorrow, maybe we yeah. stop. This could be episode one, and tomorrow could be episode B. 
So let us know if you like lift notes and we'll just do it every time we come to Colorado. Sweet. Cheers, guys. Thank you so much for watching or listening. Awesome. Yay. That is so beautiful. This is so awesome. I, I like it better when it's this coat. It's this yeah, golden it's color to it. Yeah. It's like yeah. crispy. Awesome. <laughs> okay. So you ready? cocktails. What would you like? Oh my goodness. And now just a few photos from the dinner party that followed this evening after our second day of skiing and our first lift talks. This is the uh, beef wellington. This is the dessert. And this is just some nice dinner conversation. <laughs>